If you're like me, you like using HDRI domes to light your scene or as a baseline for starting to light your scene. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built my own HDRI rig uh, that I use as a starting point of lighting my scenes. So if you want, you can follow the links down below. You can go and download this thing. If you don't care to see how it's built, download it, enjoy it, my gift to you. Uh, but if you'd like to uh, see how I built this thing, I will walk you through the different steps so you can either build upon this yourself or at least understand how I put this together. Now, I built this because in the past I would use HDRI domes in Redshift or Octane, and that was a great starting point to just get a good feel for my lighting and try different things. I will say at a full disclosure, this is not the exact same thing as Octane or Redshift. The skylight is pretty good, but I found that I have to add supplemental like directional lights or whatever else to get the lighting to where I want it. So it needs a bit more, but why I did not use the HDRI uh, dome setup that comes with Unreal, I found a few problems with that that I found just a bit frustrating. Uh, the first meaning, it, it seemed like something you would sit an object on, like a photo studio, and you'd use it as the background. You'd have to scale it way up if you wanted it to be distant in the horizon. And it, I just found that it wasn't the most flexible. So in this rig, I'm going to show you how I separated the background so I have control over what the camera sees behind the scene, but the lighting is also separate. This has worked better for me when I'm using uh, studio rigs, like photo studio rigs, I'm sorry, Photo Studio HDRIs or Skylight HDRIs when I'm using like natural skies or even just abstract stuff. I found that just has, I found that this just has a bit more flexibility to it. Enjoy. Okay, so this HDRI dome is selected. You'll see the few controls that I've put over here. We've got a texture image slot for HDRI lighting, and we have another one for HDR backdrop lighting. These are separated on purpose. I wanna be able to, for whatever reason you want to, you could load separate images in here in the background, but I also wanted to be able to turn this off without actually affecting the lighting in the scene. Um, one of the other things that I kinda wanted to decouple these things from the HDRI studio that comes stock with Unreal. And you'll also know too, let's turn this floor off for a minute. You can see that if I disable the backdrop, all this lighting is still getting picked up and the reflections are there. This is just controlling this outer sphere that's massively huge way off in the distance. So you have this that we can control. So first let's open up this blueprint. Now I created this blueprint, just a regular actor. And inside of this, I've got a skylight that I created. And I've also got this sky dome. Let's shuffle these around and I'll show you these pieces that I'm referencing that I just drug into this. So under components, you can look here, we've pretty much got this stock texture that comes with it. This is a placeholder that just kind of keeps all the settings uh, in place because if I didn't have an image, it reset and it's kind of, kind of weird. We've got this master material that I'll go for in a minute. We've got this material instance that's actually living on the sphere. And then I've got this sky dome sphere that I created. It's really just a giant sphere with inverted normals. That's what's gonna hold the image that you will actually see, but it's not actually controlling the lighting. The lighting is being controlled by this skylight. So kind of work our way back up. You'll see static meshes in here. I am referencing this HDRI instance that I'm dynamically using blueprints to override the materials. We go up to the skylight. A few things to keep in mind if you're making this yourself, you always wanna make sure that the source type is set to SLS specified cube map. Um, captured scene, I believe, is what comes on by default. Um, you don't want that. That's going, to, our SLS specified cube map is going to allow you to load a HDRI image that you want. Alternatively, real-time capture, this is going to capture everything that's in your scene and give you feedback. If you don't want that, that's going to break it as well. And the other thing I cranked up in here too was cube map resolution. By default, this is 128. I set this up to 1024. You can probably crank this even higher if you wanna get more uh, definition out of this, but I just started with that. And let's look at the construction script of how this is set up. So it's only running in the construction script. None of this is intended to be animated and it's just a lighting tool. So I have the skylight brought in. I am referencing first node, which is set cube map. So I want to override the cube map that's in here. 
And then I've made a variable HDRI lighting. And then I've got this category. I've got the lighting and the rotation. We'll get down to the rotation in a minute. So this texture cube map, I pretty much expanded off of here and just set that to be a variable. So now if we're in this scene, you can see HDRI lighting. This is that texture variable cube map that we were looking at. So now I have access to load this in from the blueprint over here in this details panel, which is what I want. I don't want to have to deal with it in materials. I don't want to deal with it inside of the blueprint. And then pretty much at this point, I kind of went down and just exposed the parameters that I wanted and set controls to go with these. So to kind of show you a side by side here, you can see HDRI lighting is here. HDRI lighting brightness is the next variable I made. It's just a float. We're piping this into set intensity. And then going down even further, uh, set source cube map angle. Now this is not exposed. Nah, this is exposed. One of the caveats with this is you do this in like Cinema 4D or Octane, you can kind of just rotate the sky around on all three axes if you really wanted to. It's one of the limitations with the skylight, but since that emits the light, I can deal with it. So I was going to try to do the rotation angle X, Y, and Z for this whole thing, and I can spin this outer sphere around, but I can only get the single axis on the skylight, so is what it is. But I did a map range clamped, and basically it's like a range mapper in Express, if that's your thing. From zero to one, we're gonna output this from zero to 360. And let me show you how that functions in here. So now I've got this rotation Z. This is just going to allow me to scrub through and rotate this lighting around. And you can see that our lighting updates and our reflection updates. Sweet. Moving along. So then the next section is material overrides. And this is just the sphere. Pretty much did the same thing that you're seeing here. Uh, covered this in another material, which I'm sure will pop up as a link but I want to create a dynamic material instance. So this blueprint is going to reference the material that's attached to it. And then we're gonna control it from the blueprint, not from the material. That way all of our controls are over here and you don't have to dive into more menus. This just keeps it faster and cleaner. So get material goes into create dynamic material instance. From there, I'm using the same HDRI I'm sorry, different HDRI. This is a, just a texture type. And this is one reason to uh, I had to use a texture cube to control the skylight, um, this variable, and then I had to use a different variable type to control it in this material. I probably would have put these on, uh, or at least experiment with putting these on the same float, but I had to break them up. So that's one of the reasons why these are separated. So HDRI backdrop, that's going to now control this. And as you can see over here, here's that texture channel that we were using to reference that. So I've got those loaded up. Set scalar parameter value on materials. Now I'm just going to control the brightness of the backdrop. And I also put in rotation angle X and Y, but I just left these hidden. So say I did figure out how to get this uh, skylight to rotate on both axes. These are set up here, but you can delete these if you want. They're not really doing anything. I'm just kind of passing through uh, just to keep this in place what I, or if I wanted to. But rotation angle Z, this is the one that makes it out to our uh, our editor. So to show you a bit more of how this works, now that I've showed you how it's built, we have this brightness that I can increase on the lighting or I can turn off and you'll see that it's completely separate from the backdrop. Same thing here, I can tone this way down if I wanted to, like it's just too powerful but I wanna keep it there. I can kinda of use these in art, direct them together or you can just turn it off altogether and not deal with it. And as I already showed you before, this is our last variable. And this is really how this thing is built from a blueprint standpoint. Now moving on to materials. This one took a little bit of thinking, but it wasn't too bad. So I've got just a black constant. I don't want this thing to have any light when it's off. And I don't want this catching any reflections either. So these two things are gonna be controlling that part and it's all just going in the emissive. So this little noodle thing here, I'm just gonna walk you through what it is. If you want to, you can screenshot this whole thing if you wanna go through and dissect how to do this and pipe this in and then it just all plugs into emissive. So I'll do a quick walkthrough just to kind of roughly explain it. So I'm breaking out the RGB channels or the X, Y, and Z channels 
and this is what I did. So constant three, just set the first one to blue. I've got my uh, labels here named, so I named all these uh, parameters. And pretty much just kind of using this rotate about axis. So this color is gonna set, because it's blue, it's just the Z, that's gonna set our normalized rotation axis. We're gonna control the rotation angle with this value. And then the pivot point, I'm um, using this just to set to all of them. And then we've got our absolute world position as well. And that's piped into the position of all of these. And pretty much took these things right here and duplicated it and just switched them to red with X, Y with green. And we just add these together. So we're pretty much assembling um, Z, X, and Y to come up down at the end ran this through this normalize and now we can pipe this right into our uvs so this is going to actually project this spherical map onto our sphere and give us the control that we need to and then from here added a brightness to it um, this is what i'm controlling inside of the blueprint with my brightness variable and that's really it for controlling these uh controlling the color on this a few notes on the troubleshooting end, things that I wanted to cover. So if you are having any issues with this when you open it up and you're wondering why it's weird, uh, first and foremost is this is set to deal with the standard materials in Unreal Engine. So I built this in 5.2. I have brought it into 5.3 and I've played with Substrate as well, but if you do end up using these materials in Substrate and we open this up, you're just going to have to make sure that your base color, your specular, and your emission are all being mapped properly. So in Substrate, you're going to add like your legacy Substrate node. That's going to go into front material. Um, this will probably be broken, and you'll just need to rewire these few nodes to get it to work with Substrate. The next thing to keep in mind is, which I already pretty much covered, if you go into the skylight, you want to make sure that real-time capture is not on because that's going to be looking at everything around you, and that will break it. You also want to make sure that you have this set to SLS specified cube map. I think by default it starts as captured scene. So if this is switched on, it's not going to read this image and it's not going to look good. Cube map resolution, if you want to get a little bit more out of your reflections, um, I, I cranked this up a little bit. You could probably go higher, but this was, I thought was a good starting point. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, you know what to do. See you in the next one.